What's going on everybody? Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going over another Docker container project. This time, it's a self-hosted web-based emulator that can run a full desktop environment like Alpine, Ubuntu, Fedora, and Arch-based Linux in a container. It even has officially supported flavors, and it's all accessible through any modern web browser. I can think of a lot of uses for this one. The first one that comes to mind is enabling children to begin learning Linux without having to worry about messing up the installation, and even if they did, it's just so simple to reload the container, unlike reloading a VM virtual machine or a bare metal install. Imagine connecting this container to a reverse proxy and having access to a remote sandbox from anywhere there is internet. This is a great project, and it's seemingly limitless applications. And why wouldn't you want to show off a full desktop environment in a browser to your friends? Talk about Flex. And that alone is worth the price of admission, my friend. Okay, so let's not waste any more time and get right into this. So I stumbled across yet another LinuxServer.io blog post. And I thought it would be awesome to demonstrate. Plus, I really want to explore how this thing works. This container contains services that make it possible, including a guacamole server, an XRDP server, Pulse Audio, and a custom Node.js front end. This container's brilliance doesn't stop there. It also has pixel perfect rendering, a basic window manager, audio support through the RDP protocol, clipboard support, on screen keyboard support, and even remote file management for uploads and downloads. So let's get this thing going. Again, in continuing on with Yacht, I will be using it. And if you want to know how to install it, check out my video in the corner right now. You can deploy this using Docker CLI, or the command line, Portainer Stacks or Templates, Docker Desktop, Docker Compose, for which I do have a Docker Compose YAML file on my GitHub account, but I also have a template file, and that's what I'm going to be using in Yacht today. So I'll just head over to my GitHub account, and copy the JSON file link to use in Yacht. So we'll make this bigger, so you can see the webtop template.json. When you click on it, just click this raw, and then at the top, copy out that address. Now with the link copied, we just go over to Yacht, and go over to Templates. And in Templates, when we hit the plus button, we just have to give it a title. I'm just going to call mine the project name, WebTops, and I'm going to paste in that URL, and then hit Submit. So now we can see in our templates, we have another one called WebTops, which we just put there. So if we click into the WebTops, we can view the configuration that is in there. And to set the flavor of Linux that you want to use, it is with the image. So going back over to my GitHub, if we look at the README, we can see some keyboard layouts, which is defined down here in keyboard for environmental variables. And we can also see the version tags. And there are a number of versions that we can run as you can see from this list here. So I would like to try out, let's see, the ICE Window Manager Alpine. So here's the version tag. I'm just going to copy it. And back over in Yacht, when I hit Deploy for the image here, I'm just going to remove Latest and paste in that version tag. And then Continue. The host port that we're going to expose is 3001, and that is because with my previous video, if you did watch it, I have the emulator JS running on port 3000. So on the host computer here, I'm going to change it to 3001, and that's going to map inside the container port 3000. And now we can just hit continue, and it's just going to map from the host config to the containers config. So we just hit continue. And here in the environment variables, if you have a different keyboard layout, this is where you would change it right here. And also set your time zone. 
So I will just go ahead and hit deploy. Now this may take a little while because it's going to have to go out, pull the image, and then deploy the container. So I will just fast forward this part and bring the video back as soon as it's done. Now that we have our container deployed, let's take a look and see what we got. Over here is where you have your on-screen uh, keyboard support fit to the window. We can go full screen to give us an experience outside the browser. And hitting escape brings us back to our browser window. And here we have the file manager support. So that is going to be for uploading and downloading to and from our computer to the desktop in a browser. And then this would be the clipboard here. I'm just going to go back to full screen. So you may be wondering, why would you want to run Linux in a browser? And it may just be that you're new and you want to experiment or learn or even just take a test drive or you're simply bored. The good thing about this emulator is that you don't have to install anything on your computer other than the Docker container, obviously. But it doesn't make any permanent changes to your system. And honestly, pulling a Docker container is going to be faster than setting up a virtual machine, assuming you want one of the 24 flavors of Linux that are provided with WebTop, and you're not concerned with the performance. Because as we will see, if we try to load up Firefox, it's going to load up a little bit slow. But that actually wasn't too bad. And what version of Firefox do we have? So version 91.9. And how long does it take to load a web page? So there is a little bit of a delay there, but it's not too bad. And as I was saying about the performance, we can't expect bare metal performance, but it's not too bad. And some things, well, probably a lot of things are going to be slow, but this is amazing, right? Well, I believe it is. And I've been trying to wean my children off their reliance on Windows, but they've been too terrified to take the plunge. But with this web-based emulation, I can have them poking around and familiarizing themselves with Linux, demonstrating that many, if not all, of the games and applications that they currently use can be found in the free and open source software community. So let's actually have a look around. So keyboard shortcuts, Control-Alt-T. No, that's not opening up a terminal. No programs installed, so it's X term. And that is really small. And you can see just dragging it around is not, not the greatest. And it took a while to stop there. Okay, so if we hit control and then the right mouse button. We can change our font. Let's go enormous. Oh, that didn't change. Huge. All right. So now let's run. Let's try that again. So we are using kernel 5.15. And it is for the Raspberry Pi. So to do the updates, we're going to go sudo apk update. And then this is how you keep your web top distribution up to date. And then sudo apk upgrade. And this is how all of the updates uh, with this version of Linux are done.
And this is a nice thing about this setup as well, is that if there is a program you want to install within some limitations, you can install it. We just run commands in the terminal to keep the system up to date, just like a regular system. All in all, I think this is pretty neat, and it's a pretty great flex. Kind of nerdy. Well, completely nerdy. But hey, embrace that. So that update is complete. So this was Alpine Linux with the Ice Manager. Uh, sorry, Ice Manager, Window Manager. But let's say we want to have a look at... Arch KDE. So the nice thing about this, I'll just close this down. The nice thing about this is we can come back into templates and click on the web tops again and hit deploy. And again, change the image latest. So it'll be semicolon and then Arch KDE. And this should deploy a lot faster now that we've already pulled down the image. And deploy. Oh, that's going to not like that because we're running on the same port. Oh, shoot. I forgot to change the host IP or the host uh, port here. So it is going to fail. So I will pause the video or stop the video. And uh, once it fails, I will bring it back and we'll redeploy. All right. So another thing I noticed is the name. We can change the name to web tops and then dash the Arch KDE so we know which uh, flavor of Linux is running on that particular one. And again, for the image, we just changed that to Arch KDE. And in networking, I'm just going to change this to a 2 so it doesn't conflict with my other container. And now we should be good. So we'll let that deploy. And once it's deployed, I will bring the video back. OK, so one thing about the name that I found is the name of the container can't have spaces in it. But now we can see that we have two desktop versions of Linux running in the containers. So the KDE Arch that we just deployed, let's have a look at that one. And this is taking a bit to load up, but there we go. And now we're here on the desktop. And let's open up a terminal. Make that larger. And to update, we would just use sudo pacman syu. And this is how we keep our web tops up to date. I'm just going to click no to that for this video. Well, my friends. I am definitely going to deploy a few more of these containers to have a look at some of the other flavors, um, but I will be leaving you now. If you've made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you. I hope this was exciting for you and you learned something useful. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below, and I hope to see you in future videos. Goodbye.